the first thing that's important for us to know about light is that light largely travels in a straight line. If I imagine a, f a group of your friends and yourself uh, standing in a row like so, and one of you has a flashlight like this one, how would the light reach any one of these individuals in this picture? Well, the light travels pretty much in a straight line, and if this young lady was f shining her flashlight directly at this person, the other people in the standing in a row here would not see that flashlight beam. It would not glare in that person in the other people's eyes. It would be pretty much right at one person. Just like if I stand over here and I shine my flashlight at the first individual, you can see that that flashlight beam is pretty much strain, aimed straight at one person, and the other people aren't affected at all. Yes, the, the room is illuminated a little bit by this light, but it's, the flashlight is handing it right at one person. It's traveling like a beam. And the same if I move my arm over here, I'm aiming it right now into the eyes of the second person and the third person and so on. Light mostly travels in a, directly in a straight line. That's not exactly the case if we were all standing in front of a mirror and one of us again was holding a flashlight. If we were to aim our flashlight directly at that mirror, like I am right now, the light, as we know, would reflect. And the question is, how does it reflect? Does it reflect in all different directions? In other words, if, I, if this individual is shining her flashlight right at that mirror and the mirror is sort of directly in front of the middle person here, do all the people in this picture see the flashlight beam or does only one person see the flashlight beam? The situation is a little different when we shine light in a mirror, of course. When we shine light in a mirror and we have maybe a few of us standing in a row like this, then the one who's standing here with the flashlight and aiming at that mirror, that light is going to bounce off that mirror in a certain way. And it's not the case that all the people in this standing in, front in a row here will see the light from that mirror. In other words, it won't cause a glare in everyone's eyes. Only one person is going to see the light reflected from the flashlight. If we were looking at this from above, this might be what we would see. We would have one person standing right here with their flashlight and aiming their light straight into the mirror, like so. Well, that person uh, is standing off to the side of the mirror, and perhaps you know that in, in this case, the, the light is going to reflect off over to the other side. So actually, the person right here will see the light reflected from that flashlight. All the others will wonder what's going on and what the excitement is, and they won't see a single thing. They might see um, each other. In, in other words, if one person is standing right here, they might see in the mirror their neighbor right here. Or if another person is standing right here, they might see their neighbor standing that's right there. Each of us will see a different thing in the mirror, as you might have guessed when you, see, when you stand in front of a mirror off to the side a bit. You see somewhat different parts of the room depending on where you are. But in this case, it's helpful to see it with a flashlight because we know that light travels in a straight line. And how is it that light gets to that person well, it has to reflect off the mirror. I'm going to do a little experiment now just to kind of bring that home and really point out to us what light looks like when it reflects off of a mirror because I think perhaps some, sometimes it's easier to see it than it is just to hear about it. So I'm going to go over uh, to this little setup where I have a, a small laser box and this laser box is going to hit uh, this mirror right here. This is a mirrored surface. I'm letting uh, this mirrored uh, surface sit up against a protractor. And the protractor is here just to help me measure uh, some of the angles that are going to be uh, taking place. So I'm always going to be measuring angles of the light as it comes into the mirror and as it comes away from the mirror. And if you can see uh, here, I've got this protractor set up so that zero measures the number of degrees, and this goes zero uh, degrees, away from the perpendicular to the mirror. So the mirror. Uh, runs along like this direction, and something that's perpendicular to the mirror points straight out. And this is called zero degrees, or the perpendicular. The light that's coming into the mirror is coming in right there, and it looks like it's about eight degrees off of zero. In other words, it's coming in at an eight angle eight degrees away from the perpendicular, and it's hitting the mirror right about here where my finger is, and then it's reflecting away off in this direction. And it looks like, um, at least to the degree I can read this correctly, Maybe that reads 9, but it's give or take. So I'm going to record those numbers so that we have them later. Now I'm going to rotate this a little bit. 
just see how uniformly this holds true. I'm rotating this protractor and the mirror so that now the light is coming in at an angle approximately 16 degrees away from the perpendicular. And it looks like, if I read this correct, oh, maybe it's closer to 17 degrees. Uh, it looks like it's coming away at an angle pretty close to 17 degrees as well. That's right about where my finger is. So I'm going to write that down. I'm going to try going the other direction. I'll have the light come in straight in. And notice what's happening to the reflected light ray. It's coming in uh, closer and closer to the incident ray. So as I hit zero, it looks like they line up perfectly. So in other words, a light ray that's coming in at zero degrees exits at zero degrees. I'll try one, one or two more. See how generally this holds true. Here's something that's entering at about 22 degrees, and it's exiting at about oh, 21 and a half, something like that. It's not very precise to read this off of a protractor. And here the light seems to be coming in at about 40 degrees and exiting at about 40 degrees. Okay, so we have a little bit of information now about what light does when it, uh, it reflects off of a mirror. And if I look at this table, uh, in this column I've recorded all the numbers we just kind of watched there, where we're kind of watching the the angle at which the light is coming into the mirror away from the perpendicular, or away from the uh, angle straight pointing away from the mirror. And in this column, for each of those trials, I've recorded now what is the angle at, the light at which the light leaves the mirror. And again, I'm not reading this perfe protractor perfectly, but if it comes in at 8 degrees, it looks like it left around 9. If it comes in at 17, it left at about 17. And in general, what you can see is that the angle in is roughly equal to the angle out. This is, in fact, the law of reflection uh, for mirrors. Uh, sometimes when people use Greek letters here, they use the Greek letter theta for angles. And they write theta in is equal to theta out. The law of reflection is such that the light always leaves the mirror at exactly the same angle as it enters the mirror. And that's for the kind of shiny mirrors that we've been talking about, the kind that you would look in in your bathroom.